Welcome to the Virtual Air Motor Manufacturing Spring 2020. In this segment, we're going to go ahead and manufacture the main shaft. When I look at the engineering drawing for the main shaft, the first thing I look at is the material. It's made out of W1 tool steel, which is a very hard steel alloy steel to cut. It's a tool steel. In fact, it's designed to make tools. And another thing that I, I see when I look at the engineering drawing is we have a very tight tolerance on the main shaft's diameter. We have 0.3125 plus or minus a half a thou, or five ten thousandths of an inch, or five tenths known as. So in order to get that tight of a tolerance, we would either have to do some sort of centerless grinding, or I can order precision stock known as drill rod. Uh, companies sell a tool material called drill rod, which has a real tight tolerance on the diameter, and we'd be able to just use that diameter with, without even doing any manufacturing operations, which is going to be the cheapest in this case. So we're going to start off with 516's drill rod, and we got to figure out how we're going to manufacture it off of a four-foot stick of 516's drill rod. It's the common size that the drill rod comes in is a four-foot length. So we learned the traditional machining processes to chop up our blanks is sawing, we're going to use a cold saw with, uh, with a steel blade in it with a really small tooth spacing in order to cut the stock to 3.96 in length. So we're developing a routing based off this engineering drawing. So the first operation will be operation number 10, where we cut the stock to the finished length of the 3.96 plus or minus 10 thou. At that point, we don't want to just believe that we made the part the correct size. So we're going to go ahead and deburr it first using the abrasive belt sander and then check the length of the go no go gauge. After we saw the tool steel, it's going to leave a really big burr that could cut ourselves and make it almost impossible to go ahead and measure the length accurately. So the second operation we're going to do involves going to the belt sander, deburring it and then checking with a go no go gauge that we have the correct length of part. After that, we need to mill the flats on the shaft. There's two flats on the shaft looking at the drawing. One of them's at the end, and it's a 550 plus or minus 15 thou in length, going down, uh, basically leaving 0.260 left of the shaft after the flat. The next one's the same depth of flat, but it's 0.625 across. So we want to go ahead and cut those flats in a mill. We're going to end up holding it with a set of soft jaws that basically locate the shaft on all of its, it constrain all of its six degrees of freedom, and then allow us to mill the flats in the top of the shaft. Orientation really doesn't matter when we first put it into the, into the mill vise there, the soft jaw set. So our next operation after deburring it, mill those shaft flats. And then at that point, we're ready to go ahead and do a straight knurl on the end of the shaft, deburr it, clean it, and inspect it. So let's go check out these operations at virtually. So in operation number 10, we cut the shaft to the correct length using the cold saw, a lot like we did in the piston video that you saw recently. After we go ahead and we, we cut it in the cold saw, we move over to the next station, hence the new operation because we unclamp the workpiece from the machine tool, and we, we come over to the abrasive belt sander. The abrasive belt sander allows us to basically roll the part and chamfer the edges very lightly. And then we can check the length when it, if it's too short to, or too long to fit in the go no-go gauge, we got to go ahead and touch it up until it can fit in the gauge. We're moving small amounts of material on this hardened workpiece, this hard workpiece with this abrasive belt sanding process. So once the, the shaft looks good to go, we're ready to go on to the next operation, operation 30, which is mill the flat. In operation number 30, we're going to use this soft jaw that has the steps cut into it and a stop on the left hand side of the part to hold the main shaft. Now, when designing the soft jaw, you got to make sure that you have the step deeper than the radius value of that shaft or the shaft will pop out when you go ahead and you try to clamp it. Now, we're going to go ahead and use a six flute 5 8 end mill in order to cut this. Now, because it's W1 tool steel, we run a really slow surface speed, and we're going to be cutting this at 1,200 
22 RPM and 12 inches per minute. So what is that in terms of surface speed and chip load for this operation when we're cutting tool steel? Remember we have a 5 8 inch end mill, 0.625 inch diameter, and at 1222 RPM and 12 inches per minute feet, speed and feed. So what's the reverse calculation for surface speed and chip load in this operation? You let me know. Now, after we go ahead and we hold it in the jaw, we're, gonna, we're then gonna use the torque wrench to go ahead and tighten the jaw. And we tighten it to a specific torque so we clamp the same amount of force on the part every single time. At that point, we close the door and we hit make sure the appropriate CNC program is loaded and we hit the green cycle start button. The 5 8 end mill comes down and slowly cuts the, the middle slot and then cuts the end slot where it's gonna attach to the crank disc. Now notice this video is sped up for your convenience. When we're all done, the table moves forward, we blow off the workpiece and we unclamp the part. Be careful, there's still some burrs on this part from the milling process. So we're gonna have to remove those burrs with a file. Filing is the best way to remove burrs before we actually inspect the part. So notice, files work in one direction, filing away from yourself, and we fully deburr that part. In operation number 40, we're gonna straight knurl the end of the main shaft where it gets press fit into the flywheel. A lot of the times a part will get knurled, a straight knurl, into the actual work, into the actual shaft that's gonna get press fit into a hole to help it basically stay in place during that press fit. Now what a knurl is, it's not a machining process, it's a forming process. We take into a hardened tool with the form of the knurl in it and press it against the workpiece while the workpiece is turning very slowly in the low gear on the lathe. So to do this, we're holding the main shaft with the collet chuck. So we go ahead and we load the main shaft into the collet chuck and the lathe is already in low gear so we can tighten the collet chuck by spinning the outside wheel. Then we align the straight knurling tool up and we slowly move it into the workpiece, forming the, the workpiece with the hard knurling tool. As you can see in the video, there's straight neural lines on the actual part now that's gonna expand the surface, make it a little bit larger, and help it press fit into the flywheel and stay forever permanently. At this point, we're 100% done manufacturing the main shaft. We wanna go ahead and bring it over to the first article inspection to make sure we've set up all of our manufacturing processes appropriately in order to make this part from start to finish to the engineering drawing or start to finish to print.